All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show with Coach Joe Golden, Abilene Christian Wildcats coach. How's life over there in West Texas, man? Man, we're surviving. We're making it. Um, you know, each day is a different day. Obviously, we're, we're in this uh, COVID uh, America, and, um, you know, you think you got it figured out one day, and you got a schedule, and the next day everything changes. So, um, you know, it's um, – it's the same out here that it, that it is everywhere. Um, we, we obviously have our cases, and uh, we just um, just uh, honestly, man, just trying to keep our kids safe and, and, and uh, keep our, our students safe that are here on campus and do everything we can to protect each other. Coach, can you believe it's going to your 10th year at Abilene Christian? Can you believe it, man? Has it, has, has it flown by for you? I'm telling you what, look at me now. Since you've met me a couple years ago, I look, I, I've aged a bunch, man. You know, this coach is <laughs> There's got to be a better profession out there. <laughs> Look good to me, Coach. Look good to me, buddy. <laughs> Words of wisdom. Don't ever take a job that transitions to Division One, man. It will age you quick. But I actually just had my 45th birthday uh, yesterday. So, uh, you know, I I'm very fortunate. You know, uh, we all know in coaching, man, um, you don't have the opportunity usually, A, to, to come back to the place you played at, uh, and then B, to, to stay long at a place. It's just uh, in the world we're living in today in athletics, uh, sometimes you're, you, you, you don't get a long tenure uh, at, at, a, at a place. And so I'm very fortunate uh, to have the opportunity to raise my family and to coach at a place that I went to school. And um, it, it, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's flown by. Those, those first five or six years were tough and long um, and a lot of butt whoopings. But the last three years has been very enjoyable. Oh, yeah, I can only imagine transition from D1 from to D1 from where you're coming, coming from. I can only imagine. I, I'm going to be talking to Dick, Coach, and Dick, Coach Jenkins at Dick City State. I'm going to talk to him about that next week. So I, I can only imagine what all that goes through. You can't go play tournaments. You got your limited. Oh, I, I, trust me, Coach. I, you made through that, 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 that tunnel for sure. Tell him not to call me, man. I don't got any advice. I've put that away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sure will, man. I sure will, man. So, Coach, I'll tell you off the air about, you know, for me in March 11th was, was what, my last day working, Knicks Hawks game, and I know it's around time you guys have tournaments. So, that whole week, how was it for you guys going from preparing for a tournament to going home and not coming back f until just recently now? And so, how did that whole process go for your team going from in that mode of playing to at home and – not knowing what next step is going to be. Yeah, you know, Joe, uh, it was, it was, um, it was, it was very difficult. You know, the hardest thing I think I've had to do with the team, um, and, and it was, uh, I don't know if we did it right. To be honest with you, I don't know if anybody knew what was going on. You know, we just tried to stay in the moment with our players, and and we didn't know anything. Just like I don't think the country had any idea of what you know. We went to bed. We actually got down to our, our conference tournaments in Katy, Texas. Um, we got we finished second in the league, so we got the double bye. So we weren't going to play until um, I guess Friday. Uh, so we got down there Tuesday night. We're going to practice, uh, or maybe we got down there Wednesday. It was going to practice Thursday, and then that night is when the uh, the NBA shut down. You know, you could kind of see it happening, and then the, the, they canceled the games, and everybody was in. So you knew going to bed that night that uh, it just wasn't going in the right direction. And then uh, we actually had games being played that day with fans, oh, wow. uh, and, and they had told us the next day. Uh, that there was going to be just family involved. You know, the past wasn't going to allow the whole general public into the tournament. But then that morning, you know, you could see the big the big power fives were starting to cancel. And so at that point, we kind of knew where this was headed. We were actually headed to practice, uh, and we never got on the bus. We ended up uh, calling everybody down to the to the hotel, to our conference room, and uh, we just had a, we had a meeting, and, and uh, we were just honest with them, boss man. You know, we just uh, told them we didn't know what was going on. Uh, but that, uh, you know, obviously this season was probably over. Uh, we weren't going to play, obviously, the conference tournament. We didn't think there was going to be any postseason. And uh, it was real emotional. You know, for those seniors, I think it was the first Definitely. time ever when you're a senior, you always you either, you know, whatever, 15 kids probably win the last game, you know, in Division One. But everybody else, you put that uniform on, and you know when you take it off after you got beat, that's the last time you're ever going to put that uniform on. And, and our seniors didn't have the opportunity to do that, you know. So, um we, we let them address our team and kind of told, uh, you know, they were able to share stories of their journey and, and everything they had done in our program and kind of celebrated those seniors because I kind of felt in that they had played their last, you know, last opportunity. So it was emotional. Uh, I felt for those kids, you know, you put so much at our level in a one bid league, everything goes into to that one week in March. Yes, you know, indeed. The opportunity. So we have all, as a staff and players, had worked hard and then all of a sudden it's taken away. But obviously they made the right decision looking back now on what we're all having to deal with. Uh, it was the right decision. And, um, 
we came back and we got our team back here and we actually had just gotten a, an email from our president that said that we were going to have an extended week for spring break. So we told him, hey, you never had spring break in the last couple of years, so go have fun. We'll see you in a week uh, and we'll regroup here and, and figure it all out. And, you know, that was the last time we saw him again until until mid-July. So um, it, it, uh, it all happened fast. Uh, it, it was uh, very difficult to deal with. And uh, obviously we missed seeing our guys. You know, I had no idea we wouldn't see him again until July. And nor did I think right now, you know, in October the 16th, we would still be dealing with it like we are. So it's just – it's been crazy times. Absolutely, Coach. I haven't left Atlanta since March. You know, so I haven't left town since March, man. So I, I can't go see anybody practicing right now because I they, they're not letting media in, or they're not even letting guys on. Just who do you know in? So like, if you're not part of the program, you can't go check out practice right now. So I like to go look at practices. I can't go do that right now because of, of course, you know, the virus. I can only imagine not seeing, seeing guys on spring break and all of a sudden, July. Hey, now I see you again. Like you didn't sign up for that for sure. Yeah, no, it's been, it's been really difficult, but it was great to see him in July. You know, obviously we, you, you, uh, you know, we enjoy, if you're in this business, you enjoy being around kids and building relationships and turning these guys into men. And when all of a sudden it's taken away from you, I think we, we take each day for granted. We definitely learned around here that, that you can't do that, you know? And so it was great to get them back here. And we've been fortunate that our university has come back in, in, in person um here in, in the fall and so it looks different obviously you know uh everybody's got masks on and there's social distance classrooms and there's obviously it, it doesn't have the same feel but at least it's it's good to see some energy back around campus now coach golden and looking at you academically how was that for your young man going from being on in person to virtual i know that's hard for a young man who's not used to that going from at your own home home on your own devices you know the new environment so how's that academically for your young man trying to finish that semester out in the spring there being back home well, you know, first of all, if you and I were smart on March 11th, we'd have bought some stock in Zoom, man. And I probably wouldn't be coaching here anymore. I'd, I'd be out on my – had my beach bar already out. out <laughs> and be done coaching. But, uh, you know, I, uh, here's a funny story on that, too. We told our guys, you know, they had an extra week of spring break. And so uh, once we found out we were going all online to finish it, uh, I would say, uh, you know, the majority of our guys left all their books – and you know all everything here and so uh we had to mail their books to them we had to get them their back all their supplies and and of course they had their phone and their laptop they don't go anywhere today uh you know without that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to deal with that and then you know just getting them out of their dorms all their all their their i mean it was just uh it was a mess but um our staff did a great job of of getting that to them and then uh we just basically um would touch base with them through Zoom, and then obviously they did their classwork on Zoom, and uh, it was definitely di uh, different uh, than anything they'd been through. Um, and uh, but but our professors did a really good job of here with some patience with our guys and and, and with the rest of the student body um, as well, and we were able to survive it. You know, our guys were all able to academically be great. Uh, we had a great semester, um, and um, you know we're able to, to to navigate and figure it out. But I think every, every university did a great job. At, everybody did. They were different, probably, uh, on how they did it. But, um, it, you know, our, guy, our guys were able to survive and do it. They were, we'd have to call them in the morning, still like always, and make sure they got up. And we'd have to check and make sure that they were on Zoom and they weren't laying in bed without their video on. We'd make them turn their video on on the Zoom. And, uh, and so I think moms and dads got, got also had the opportunity to see what we deal with every day. With, right. uh, <laughs> sure. so I think that probably helps us now when we call in. They know what we're dealing with. <laughs> You got there right. And then that coach, now you got back in July. So how's it been trying to, re trying to get the guys ramped back up? Because you don't have those soft tissue injuries and you have nag all your life or get a knee or an ankle or something that just never goes away. So how's that, that ramp up being getting the guys back in shape so they can get ready for November 25th here coming up in a, in a month or so here? Yeah, you know, I think we're still trying to navigate it and figure that out because it's different than it's been any season. But I, I do think uh, we're trying to be careful with that. Uh, in July, we were real careful. We got them back just slowly progressing to, to getting back. We did a lot of group work and a lot of individual work, um, and we didn't just throw them right back into it. Uh, and we've kind of done the same thing in the fall. Uh, we started out the first couple of weeks doing a bunch of group work and then slowly went to some five on zero and then just recently uh, started doing more five on five uh, action and playing. And so... Uh, you know, the, the difficult part of it is navigating, uh, you know, if guys are out because of tracing, um, the contact tracing deal, and just, you know, how many guys do you have available for practice? Uh, but I, uh, to your point, you know, usually we're, get, we're amped up right now because we're ready to go here early November, and now we're not getting started till late November. And, uh, you know, I, I, I 
I think you have to be really careful, um, especially if we're able and fortunate uh, and to get the season in. You know, that, that's a lot of basketball now um, all the way straight through to March. So, um, and these guys haven't hooped, you know, like you said, till, since March. Uh, it's been a long time. And these guys, hoopers hoop, you know, it doesn't matter yeah, if they're right. they hoop, you, you know, you're at the YMCA, you're at the rec center, the outdoor park, uh, you're hooping somewhere. And these guys haven't had the opportunity to do that. You know, even in Abilene, Texas, uh, they took the goals down, you know, at the city parks. And, and there ain't a whole lot of hoopers here in Abilene, I can promise you. So when they're doing that, I can imagine across the country that, you know, these kids didn't have the opportunity to go anywhere and play. And play. So, um, you know, really so the last two or three weeks since we started going five on five was the first time that these guys have had the opportunity to do that since March. So I think you got to be careful. Um, you know, we, we, have, we want to stay injury free. And obviously we want to play our best basketball in February and March. And so uh, we're, we're making adjustments. I, I don't think we'll, we'll do it perfect, but hopefully we'll, we'll navigate that as the season goes along. Now, how was kind of coach guys on Zoom just during the spring and summer here about going over the concepts, the different defenses, showing the film? So how was that having them on video kind of make, see how they were looking at you, Patrick, at you, the coach, when you go over a different defense or offense? How was that this summer? Yeah, it was definitely unique and different. I, I actually uh, told our guys, once it started to see it progressing that way, that we weren't going to be back for a while. I told our guys, listen, I want you to spend time with your families. You know, you don't ever get this opportunity, you know, to go back home and spend time with your mom, dad, brother, sister, grandma, everybody. Have fun. Um, and obviously use this time to really unite, you know, and, and stay safe during that time. And we kind of left them alone, boss, man. We didn't, you know, do a ton of Zooms with them. We obviously stayed on top of them academically. Uh, but besides that, we kind of left basketball away. You know, I just wanted them to, to get away from basketball, stay safe, um, and, and spend time with their family. Um, the longer it went, then it was like, oh, I don't know if I should have said that, you know, because yeah. there comes a point in time where you got you to gotta do some stuff, especially for your new players, your freshmen, you know, and, and, and your new junior college players. Uh, you want them to, to feel comfortable. So we obviously got into more of that. It, it was different. It was unique. Uh, you know, I feel now that we're comfortable on Zoom now, but back then it was really different and you never – uh, you know, you didn't know if you didn't need to get that close to the camera yeah. back up. How you yeah, talk, yes. you know, like, it's just a, to, to get used to it. Um, so it, it took time. I'll tell you one thing that we've struggled with. We're really big on building relationships in our program. You know, we, yes, we, we try to do it every day, man. We, that's something that we do uh, daily. And uh, that's made it difficult with the COVID, with the Zoom. Uh, even though we're speaking to them daily, you just don't have that hands-on interaction. You know, it's not yes. even now that they're back. You know, we can't do team functions. We can't do all the stuff that we, we, we usually do because of the COVID stuff and, and having to be six feet apart all the time. So that's, that's made it really difficult uh, for us, and we've had to navigate that because I think that's one of the most important things we've done here um, is, is really, really build, um, you know, relate. And, and people talk about that, Bossman, all the time, you know, build relationships, and it kind of drives me crazy because – the, the, the coaches out there that truly do it, man, it's hard, man. It, you got to do it every single day. Yes. Uh, and, and our kids are going to see through it, you know, and, and we really take a lot of pride in that. We coach our kids really, really hard on the floor, but we love them harder off of it. And we've had to navigate that and, and make some adjustments. That's been tough for us. Speaking of some of your guys who came in new, talk about some of your key returners and some of your newcomers as well, Coach. We want to keep an eye on this year for you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we were we were fortunate uh, in, in the recruiting this year in the spring. We returned uh, 10 guys uh, off last year's team. And so we were able to put back to back 20 win seasons together for the first time in school history. And we're returning 10 of those players. Uh, and we'd already signed three guys early. So we didn't have to recruit any in the spring. So we were very fortunate. Yes, indeed. Uh, in that during this, this COVID time. So uh, we're happy. We're excited about our team. We got a lot of pieces back. Uh, you know, we have I think out of 10 guys back, nine guys played uh, extended minutes for us. Um, you know, we have obviously four out of five starters back. The one player uh, that, that left us, Peyton Ricks, a senior, he was the first team all-league player uh, and was our leading scorer. So uh, it's not the same team back, but we do have the majority uh, of our group back. Um, and so we're excited about that. And then we added four freshmen uh, to, to our program. Um, so we've uh, two big kids, one from Minnesota and one from Oklahoma, and then a guard uh, from Hebron uh, outside of Dallas. So – um, we're excited about those freshmen. I don't know uh, if we're going to need them to play immediately. Uh, I think in time, though, that they, they will be ready. But the good thing is we don't have to rush that. You know, I think we have enough guys back that we can take our time with these freshmen and uh, kind of navigate. And I think that helps them, too, during this time period of the COVID stuff uh, that, that, you know, that, that we can really, uh, uh, you know, take our time and be patient with those guys and not have to throw them in. So uh, we're excited about it. Um, you know, we're, we're, we, we pray every day. I'm hoping that, that we'll have a season. I, you know, I know our kids want to play. Uh, they're hungry to get back out there and compete. And uh, we're excited about the season and we're excited about our team. Well, I love about your roster, Coach, is this, that 
You can see you have nine guys returning, which tells me this year going to be about continuity. You got to have guys who know your system because if you if you've been together for a while and you're you've playing playing to this year with the offense going around you, having that continuity is going to be very key. That's why I look at your roster. I'm like, yep, Coach Golden got some nice there because he got guys who know the system. I'm not trying to teach one on the fly here. Yeah, and I think this year that's real important. You know, to your point, I think I think. Uh, uh, just the continuity and knowing what we have in that locker room. And, and uh, you know, in a year like this, I, I think that uh, you would think the teams that have so many new pieces, you know, that, that they would struggle this time of year just because we don't have, we haven't had enough time on the floor with these guys uh, that we usually have. And so uh, we're very blessed to, to, to have a, to have a big group back. And, uh, you know, we've got, we've got a, a lot of guys on, and, you know, we have a fifth year senior. We have two juniors that played a ton as freshmen on that NCAA tournament team. So we've got a lot of experience uh, in that locker room that, that I think will help us early uh, in, in the season navigate this. Because there's going to be adversity. There's going to be things that happen. Definitely. You did in the NFL. You saw it in the NBA. Uh, actually, the NBA did a great job. Uh, but, but, but um, you know, you've seen it with, with college football. Um, you know, there, there's going to be adversity. You're going to be ready to play, and it's going to get canceled, and you're going to have to handle that. And hopefully with some maturity on our, our team and some, some upperclassmen that they can handle that type of stuff. Now, Coach, being in Texas, you can probably play anybody you want to non-conference-wise and still raise the money you need, raise the money you need uh, for your university. So how has it been losing those two extra weeks to play those guarantee games and play non-conference games, maybe MTE here, here or there? So how has that been trying to put a schedule together with the two weeks being moved up to November 25th here? Yeah, it hadn't been a whole lot of fun, you know. Um, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely going to be short on, on the guarantee money that we need to get each year, you know, um, you know, and, and – all right, uh, athletic director, myself, we, you know, in our relationship, we have a number that we try to get to every year. and We're not going to be able to get to that. You know, the, the money's just not out there. Um, so, um, you know, we're, we're having to navigate this. Obviously, we threw our schedule in the trash can uh, once, they, <laughs> once they announced it, like I think everybody else did. And uh, we lost our MTE and we lost a bunch of games. And so we've had to navigate that. Um, and we, we've uh, tried to put together the best schedule we could for our guys. Um, we're, we're fortunate to get an uh, MTE, a, a really good uh, one out in Florida. Um, and so I think it's going to be a bubble type of situation out there where everybody's going to get tested and have to stay in the bubble. So uh, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get those games in out there. And then when we come back uh, from Florida, uh, from the opening bubble, we never leave uh, Texas. Again, we're always on a bus from that point and staying right here. So um, you know, we, we've, we, we're having to play some non-Division one games uh, that we, you know, um, to try to fit those in just to get teams to, 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 to be able to play. Uh, we were fortunate to get Arkansas and Texas Tech. I don't know if we were fortunate or unfortunate. There's two ways to look at that. Uh, I think you're fortunate because, you, <laughs> hey, you, your team will give them, give them all some trouble. Yeah. You'll you get for yeah. trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks for them, not, not you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, Arkansas, is good, as most of us, done a great job there. And he's, he's uh, you know, going to be really good. And Coach Beard's done a tremendous job at Texas Tech. So, uh, and then we're actually going to play Tarleton, uh, who's just down the street right now. This will be their first year to go to Division One. so with Coach Gillespie. So, um, hopefully we'll get as many of those games in. Uh, but we're trying to keep our guys in safe environments at the same time and, and uh, trying to make it to conference season, obviously, in January with our whole team healthy and, and, and ready to compete. That's what I got for you, Coach. Is give us a story about our, our mutual friend Brian Burton. Let's give me something about Coach Burton, man. That's, that's, that's my buddy too, man. Tell me a little something about brother about Brian Burton here, Coach Golden. <laughs> I'll tell you what, boss, man, we could do a whole show on Brian Burton, man. I don't know if he'd like all the stuff we could air out there, man, but I think we could raise the ratings a little bit, man. So, uh, do it. But, you know, uh, Burton's been a great friend of mine for, for a long time, and we worked together at Calm County. He was actually the assistant. Uh, I was actually just a radio guy, a uh, TV guy, trying to trying to make enough money to survive to get in the business at that time. And uh, when I got the job here at, back at Alvin Christian, Brian came on with me. He was actually already here uh, with Grant McCaskin, and, and I kept Brian on. And Brian was a part of the early transition uh, here that was some uh, – it was, you know, obviously the, some of the hardest days in, in our profession of coaching. And uh, then Brian went on and, and moved to Lamar and then uh, Fresno State to UTEP. And then uh, we're, we're honestly, um, I, I'm as proud of Brian as I've ever been um, in, our, in our friendship of, of knowing each other is what he's done over the last six months. Um, I think he's really kind of found his niche. Uh, I told him that a couple months ago, and then I saw the other day where he, he um, is, is kind of going to go full time in the next six to eight months with, uh, I think it's Rising Coaches, mm -hmm. I believe is what it is. Uh, but he's just done a tremendous job of bringing coaches 
uh, media guys, uh, everybody together during during this uh, during this COVID deal, and uh, he, he's brought up a lot of important topics, you know, uh, that need to be talked about. And uh, it, it's um, it's been it's been unbelievable for me to watch him shine in that arena. And uh, you know, he he knows he's connected to so many people. He's got a great personality. Uh, he's um, He's just done a tremendous job, you know, and, and I've been fortunate to be on a couple of those Zoom calls uh, where I've had the opportunity to, to listen and learn to, to some incredible people uh, on that. And then I've also just gone on his Zoom calls, you know, where he's had some different things. And uh, it's been great for me as a head coach uh, to listen and learn on that. But obviously, I take a lot of pride, too, of, of what Brian's doing. Um, I think he's changing lives. He's changing the way people think. Uh, he's, he's open discussion. You know, at the end of the day, uh, I'm sure you've had these talks all the time on Zoom, and, and we're, we're with the COVID and the social injustice stuff that's going on. Um, it's just an important time in our country, and at the end of the day, we got to love each other, and we got to continue to educate uh, people that m might not believe the way you and I and Brian believe, but we got to listen, and we got to continue to educate those guys and love them. And um, it's hard to do during COVID when you can't be transparent with that and face to face. But he's obviously got an avenue. I know you've done a, probably a ton of it in, in, in your avenue with your radio show and. Um, so just proud of him and, and, and everything he's done with that. Yeah, Coach, we, well, we've been out here with the, with the early vote here in Georgia. We've been giving people food and drinks and snacks while they stand in line because, you know, the vote here is kind of long because of the laws here. But, you know, we've been trying to keep people encouraged and giving them food and water. So me and my sponsors have been going out, doing that early in the morning, do afternoon runs. I'm going to get off get his call here. I'm going to do that right here as well on, on Friday. So we're working hard, Coach, trying to make it different like our community because I know I'm 33 years old, so I got to use the platform I have to, to, to do use it for good, you know. <laughs> you got to do that, man. No, there's no doubt we got to get the vote out, you know, and we, we got to – I've learned more about voting than I've ever uh, – just like COVID, I, I didn't know. And, and getting our whole team, we got every one of our guys signed up to vote. We're not making them vote. We're going to take November 3rd off to give them the opportunity to vote. A lot of our guys had to mail-in vote uh, because they obviously don't live here in Texas. But we wanted to give every kid the opportunity to vote, you know, and we're encouraging them to vote. Um, I think it's – it's it's uh, the, the you know, getting this generation to, to, to learn that, you know, and, and it starts in your community, then obviously it goes national, but just getting them to interested in the issues, uh, knowledgeable about the issues and different candidates. And then also at the same time, uh, you know, the right to vote is, is very, very important. And so, uh, you know, th this new gener this young generation is awesome, man. They, they're, they're, they, they're going to change the, They're going to change the world. They, they obviously it's, it's a different world than I was brought up in with the social media uh, stuff. I'm still learning the Twitter and everything else that's <laughs> What's going on out there but these guys man they're doing some incredible things man and i'm proud of our team i'm proud of every team across the country that you see on twitter that's doing stuff i'm proud of all you guys for continuing to to share the message and the story um and uh and and hopefully we can we you know we can make this this world a better place uh to, to live in Coach Golding, like I say, better myself, buddy. Hey, man, stay safe out there in West Texas, man. And like I said, when, hopefully we have, I can get out of the house here real soon, but I can, I can escape the city hey, of love finally. You're going to you're gonna have to catch a game sometime. And you know I was coming to Hotlanta, man. I was ready for the Final Four and we were going to meet, but I'm going to get down there one time and, and go to dinner with you. I can't wait, man. Same here, Coach. Hey, buddy. Hey, be so talk to you real soon. Have a great weekend, man. All right, thanks. Appreciate all you do. You're welcome. It's Joe Golden on the Boss Show, people. Check them out. West Texas, Abilene Christian, people.